this one affects. And boom, we are live. I'm with Mr. Johnny Commons, council member, district. 10, correct, sir, of San Jose, and we're just here for another hangout. Wanted to talk to you guys, see how you're doing. If you're watching this, if you have any questions, feel free to chime in. We'll do our best to get to them, but we just want to see what's going on with San Jose, see how Mr. Commons is doing. They're in a little period right now, right? This is kind of their the little break that you guys get. Yeah, in July, we don't have any city council meetings, so we get to catch up on all the stuff that we've neglected for the the whole yes. rest of the year and yeah. actually have a life and focus yes. on the kids and everything Absolutely. um so mr Combs, for those of you, uh, you guys that you know don't know uh mr Combs, i want to kind of uh introduce him first so you guys could get to know the elected leaders who are actually making decisions that affect your guys uh uh life so mr Combs, so you went to oak grove high yeah e eagle at Oak Grove Eagles, absolutely. And then you went on to, sorry, you went on to San Jose State? Yes, San Jose State University, graduated with a business management degree. Nice. Yeah, and okay. communications. Wonderful, wonderful. And so uh, I was reading that uh, you did go on to a few things, you know, after that. So what happened after San Jose State, which eventually led you into uh, politics and, and, and I don't even like to call it politics and being uh, a civil servant and wanting to to help others was there was there, there was a, a company uh yeah yeah so i you know i i, I worked at safeway as a manager for a little while yes. and then i uh, transitioned into the uh, stock market i became a financial advisor right. uh, for many years started my own company uh called uh, uh as an insurance agent also uh started a branch of a company called western international securities right here in san jose got it so well, that's where you're kind of a benefit consultant right yeah i was reading up on that i was like was that healthcare or yeah we I, we we uh we did we did healthcare. was they still do mm -hmm. <laughs> healthcare workers comp general liability that kind of stuff anything to help uh, small businesses we focused on small businesses small to medium size uh, groups mm -hmm. uh advised them um on everything from um errors and emissions mm -hmm. to uh vision insurance and so setting up kind of their not compensation uh, plans, benefit but kind plans. of yeah, benefit plans yeah. for their employees, and I'm sure it's crazy because laws are always changing, right? So yeah. you kind of need someone. So that was a, a yeah. The, the name of the company now is Benefit Experts. I, I don't own it anymore, I but it. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. And then, so what made you transition? And uh, I feel like politics sometimes get a gets a, a bad name in this country. You think of politics, and what do people think immediately? They're like, oh, power. House of Cards, uh, cor <laughs> cor 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 corruption. Oh, that's a so good one. Forth. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not judgmental. I know that there's always going to be stereotypes to things, but there's also many pros, many good things. In many ways, you can impact things uh, positively, um, and uh, also we're all uh, immigrants. So you were from originally families originally from Beirut, Lebanon. I was born in Beirut, Lebanon. My okay. family uh, was originally Palestinian. Palestinian, okay. Yeah, so they're, they, they're they refugees from their homeland, oh, uh, Palestine, and I'm a refugee from Lebanon. Yeah. Uh, and wow, so awesome. we came here uh, when I was eight years old. Yeah. And I was uh, grew up right here in San Jose on, mm. on Blossom Hill and Lean Avenue nice. uh, back, back in uh, 1976. Okay. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, Palestine, that's a whole other... Uh, conversation, but I think that's wonderful. I love that how diverse we are here in, in San Jose, and that's so cool. If I can only show you guys this view right here in the background, some 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 planes just went by, uh, and beautiful, beautiful. I'll take some some snaps of that later. But let, let's get to know Mr. Uh, Thomas, and and I love uh, you know I was going to some of the meetings, and I think it's very important for the youth, for everybody to know that um, in any subject, as I got older. I always wanted to tell myself objectively that, you know, there's two sides to every story and then there's uh, the truth. But we seem to put a label on things, right? You're either team Democrat or you're team uh, Republican. You think one way, you're 49ers or you're Raiders and so forth. And I think the most important objective I learned over the time until I got older and I started listening to the Jesse Ventura's the Trey Gaddy, my best friend's a police officer. I was completely against guns. That was my whole thing. Let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. And until I heard his insights, like with an open mind and studied our history that I thought to myself, well, okay, there's a, there's a method to the madness, right? 
and our First Amendment is to you know protect unpopular speech, not to protect popular speech. And I think that's very important if you think. So I think it, it's very, very important to be different, right? That it's you don't always have to go along to get along and you should question uh, everything. And the worst thing that can happen is when everybody jumps to one side of things or views. And who's to say you can't have, quote unquote, liberal views on one topic or quote unquote Republican views on one topic. Now, um, anything that's said in this conversation, if it's controversial, blame me. All right. Mr. Thomas is just a, a victim here. Uh, but I think it's so important to talk about these type of uh, uh, things. And I'm going uh, on a tangent, but, uh, you know, giving that kind of background, I was going to get your insights on why do you think personally us as humans, obviously, we we need we we have the need to want to be associated with something, and I think that's so interesting. Where with Democrats equals blue, Republicans equals red. red. Yeah. Uh, donkey <clears throat> mascot, right? Donkey or elephant. I think there's psychology behind this to get people to get go uh, behind it from a marketing uh, basis. But um, what if I'm in? independent right so so i just want to get your thoughts on why do you think that is politics aside in general when it comes to what what is it about humans do you think that really makes us i know that's a very that's a very difficult question well you know we all want to belong to <laughs> some it. respect and i think that uh, we all want to be near people who think like us mm -hmm. and i think as long as you could provide a label uh so people could gather and feel safe in their in their beliefs uh, i think that's what people feel comfortable with. Now, I agree with you. You have to be outside your comfort zone uh, in order to be a, 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 in a in order to affect change. I think you have to with be an open mind to be open minded. You yeah. have to be able to see both sides. And I feel that I am one of those people who invites both right and left uh, points of opinion right. to the table. My office is always open. I have community office hours. Anyone could drop in mm -hmm. and talk to me about any issue. I'm not right. afraid to tackle anything. Uh, and I'm a, not afraid to challenge my own views on yes. topics. And, and that's uh, whether I choose to align myself with the Republican Party or the Democratic Party uh, is second to me. Uh, my feeling is I want to do what's right for the people. I want to make sure that their money is being managed correctly and right. that we're spending it in a way that more people are going to benefit from right. the services that we provide. I see uh, Lauren and Jaskarian. What up, guys? Just uh, just joined uh, as well. Thank you guys for, for listening in. But and, uh, not to cut you off, I think that's, that's brilliant. I think it's the minute where, again, people don't feel comfortable where they can talk about things openly or they're shunned or they're cut off or... Uh, look at China. I, did, I didn't even realize the Great Firewall of China. I went and just stopped through. I'm like, well, wait a minute. There's no Facebook, no YouTube, no Gmail. I don't know why these kids will live, but I asked myself, okay, well, why uh, would you want to do that? Because if you're a government, you want to overthrow anyone or control anyone, the first thing you cut off is the media. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2017, social media, like we're live on, on Facebook right now, that's the only way that can be buildups uh, for dictatorships when things aren't right, right? Mm -hmm. um, Gaddafi is another example. I know we're going into international <laughs> issues here, but I think these all relate to something. Was it was it Gaddafi the mistaken where uh, all of a sudden they did a uh, kind of a, a stop on, on Facebook uh, or something of that? I'm not, I'm not well, sure. Well, I'm, I'm not sure, but I have been to China, and I can tell yes, you for yes. a fact that... Uh, that uh, you cannot get Google there, Facebook is not allowed, uh, uh, and so so uh, a lot of the people there actually have work software workarounds, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you know when there's a will, there's a way. Yes. I think people eventually they get <laughs> yes they can get creative, uh, and I have to say, uh, you know, people people understand technology much more than I do. That in fact, this is my first. Uh, Live yep. uh, Facebook chat. I've never but been. You're, but you're open to it. You're yes, cool um, I am open to it because mm -hmm. I want to hear what other. You know, I'm open to all people's uh, opinions. Again, um, you know, I'm I'm one of those people who's an open book. I have my own YouTube channel that I put my decisions online. Wonderful, that's good. Uh, and Document, I, don't create. Yeah, that's so important. Yeah, yeah. so so um, uh, I don't believe that government should be closed. It's a shame 
mm-hmm. that uh, that China is doing what they're doing. Right. Uh, and I, they don't they don't trust themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it really they don't trust their they don't they don't trust their own people. Right. To be constructive, and that's and that's where um, I think our government does trust our population. Whether we whether we elect people who don't represent the majority or not, mm-hmm. we still have rule of law and we're following it. And uh, you know whether we like who got elected or not, uh, we're willing to live by the rules that, that the Constitution created. And, uh, and that's why they're so important. Yeah, there has to be a blueprint. Everybody will have their opinions. Uh, there'll be hearsay, there'll be this, there'll be that. But I always tell people, no matter what we're talking about here, okay, well, this is written down somewhere, right? Uh, when it comes to even uh, franchises, you know, I, I love my arguments uh, with my, my dad. Or, well, so-and-so said this. Well, so-and-so said that. Uh, that's all great, uh, but it's just so much easier. There's got to be the handbook. There's got to be the rule, and that's why they're necessary. And that doesn't mean they can't be changed. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not amendments with because time chase, things evolve. But without that, it would be organized uh, chaos, you know. Um, now, let's go into what's, you know, settled now. But at first, another quote-unquote controversial topic. But again, this is my fault for bringing all this uh, up. But why is it controversial? It's only controversial because uh, people care about it, right? People want to talk about it. And that's uh, minimum wage. Uh, I was impressed uh, by the fact when I listened listen in, of course, you know, our majority, uh, and I know all of them, personally, all great people, and I respect their opinions. Uh, but there was a very small uh, minority, uh, you know, maybe two members, in- including yourself, who was saying, well, what about the small mom and pop family business owners? How do we think uh, about them um, when things you know, are drastically changed. Um, and, and my main concern is, is I'm all for that, but I'm just not sure that I don't recommend it anything that you should ever do leaps of 2 to $3 overnight because uh, you can put that one family coffee shop out of business overnight. And, and I think it's very important to understand that. And, and we'll go into that because what are they going to do then to adapt? They're going to start increasing prices, which is very dangerous for them, because I think the smartest thing, if anybody's listening and you want, my advice is maximum 25 cents, maximum 25 cents and do it in short frequent waves instead of jumping because jumping can actually make you lose regular customers. But I'm, uh, I'm going on a, a tangent again, but what were your, you know, your thoughts on that? And first off, where are we at? You, you, you said the federal kind of settled. Well, in the state of California, the the state it will go to fifteen dollars an hour. I think in the year twenty twenty two in San Jose, we've accelerated the process. Right. Uh, at in twenty nineteen, we'll hit the the fifteen dollar minimum wage uh, process. I I do share your concerns. I think that in some states, in fact, we now have some some statistics coming in from. Um, Seattle, where mm-hmm. they did increase their minimum wage, and there was yes. thousands of jobs that were lost. Yes. Uh, they increased it to fifteen dollars right away, mm-hmm. and I think uh, uh, wages should be increased, but incrementally, as mm-hmm. as you said, to cushion the uh, the cost uh, increases uh, with um, with other ways to save money or increase the prices that right. you charge your customer. And, and people might say, easy for you to say, Roman. You're a small business owner, right? But things aren't always that way. And again, what I simply would like to know, and I would be open to this, is let's be clear on what is our outcome here? What is our goal as we were talking about uh, earlier? Is it to increase jobs? Is it to stimulate the economy uh, in a way and get things going and make things more affordable for people? Because if I look neutrally, that's been proven that it will not increase uh, jobs that and, and some people might agree uh, disagree it's deba- debatable but um, what's going to happen people are going to simply adapt uh, business owners are going to adapt that's what they've done their whole life mm-hmm. they evolve uh, in a way so when, when every time I get into that conversation with people I just want to know and, and that kind of helps them stop and think okay well what was our because we can just keep going 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 um, but What's going to happen is robots are going to start delivering Domino's pizza. As you mentioned during your meeting, is Panera is going to improvise 
to decrease uh, uh, labor and have kiosks. You'll see Safeway where you first work. I don't know why they're not doing this, but the majority of people will have those, uh, you know, walk through lines that are automated, right? That you scan versus having hu humans in, in the three. And what's going on in your mind? Oh, this is great. I don't have to stand in line. I don't have to do whatever. But in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, they just decrease their labor. That means jobs are reduced. That means more hours went to fewer and employees. less jobs. And yeah. then people are sitting around saying, yeah, I've been applying and applying. I just, I can't find a job. Uh, and that takes us to a whole nother thing. Jobs start to get shipped out of uh, the country uh, as well because it's very tough to do business. I was looking at a map and I see Manish just joined us. Uh, a good uh, buddy, Paul Burwell. Manish was former small business owner. Paul, 7-Eleven small business owner. These all affect uh, the, these people. So um, that was kind of, you know, we had somebody talking from California Restaurants Association as well. Um, and do, do you agree or you disagree with some of the statements that, that well, I made? Well, obviously, I, I'm the one who, who championed some of these statements. So I, I am deeply concerned. About, you've actually ran a business. Yeah, because I've ran a couple of businesses. And, you know, I've never, I've never necessarily had to deal with minimum wage, but it doesn't affect just minimum wage. It affects people who are making above minimum wage when when people like myself who pay their uh, secretaries uh, two or three dollars above minimum wage, I also have to increase it by an incremental amount as well. Uh, and and unfortunately, you'd have to do it even without merit. Right. You know, you want to reward employees who do a, a great job, but um, you know, when somebody comes to you and say, "Hey, the minimum wage is up. You are paying me four dollars more per hour, yes. and now I need four dollars uh, more per hour." Uh, on top of that. And I've seen this nightmare when I was on the board and I've seen, you know, the East Bay start to go through it and there's a parallel, I'll probably be incorrect on the exact places, but say there's Hayward, Union City, and they're all connecting through cities. One all of a sudden increases their minimum wage and all the employees from the other city, they're jumping across and the ones that the other two can't uh, fill jobs. But I think, you know, it was a case study that you can increase, uh, basically when they increase wage in India, it would actually make people you know, lazier, it's been proven that the best way is to have incentives and incentive programs, meaning you do X amount, right? You complete X amount of hours, you get this or you get that. And kind of humans are more motivated by that. Um, uh, but I think all those things are, are important. So, so I know San Jose went into something with 2020, a 2020 type plan, and that pretty much federal kind of, you know, they obviously, uh, as you said before, they've kind of made their decision already on what they're going to do. So we have to go by that, correct? Yes. So in 2019, uh, the minimum wage in San Jose will be $15 an hour. Uh, my hopes is that it won't affect uh, small business uh, because we did tear it up. Uh, I, it would, unfortunately, we tear, teared it up kind of quickly. Right. And I hope that we can adjust. And I'm worried about some of our uh, larger employers, even like uh, Sears and Macy's, um, who may hire less people, and so service lines might get longer mm -hmm. uh, and uh, clothes might not get back on the racks. And, uh, and you know, and so those are the things, you know, that if they're not going to, if they can't afford it, if they can't afford to raise their prices, they're not going to hire as many people, and so the service de diminishes. Right. Or and what's even worse is people might be buying stuff online and getting shipped, getting Great. shipped products from Great. outside the states where minimum wage is not an issue. So they've closed over 400 in the yeah. past year, two years, like, uh, and that's what's crazy is I actually see some malls being built, and I think to myself, you know, uh, have you seen the state of malls lately? Everyone's getting things from uh, Amazon, so technology is there. You know, I have lots of uncles who are cab drivers, and of course, they they hate to hear it from me. Like, well, why are you bringing this up right now, Roman? I'm like, uncle, I'm looking out for you. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that uh, you can deny, deny all you want, um, but everybody's using Uber, yeah. so. The market doesn't care what you think. You can either, uh, you know, be upset uh, or you can evolve and, um, you know, or a lot of you find a way to do it better th than them, you know. But uh, to not be a realist in that way that things are involving, you're going to be uh, left behind, right, no matter no matter how big uh, you are. But let, let's get into some, some topics. And, again, I want to be super clear that I'm not team Republican, not team I'm team human. How about that? I'm team humanist and always being open and honest. And I think it's a, a bad thing to jump either way. But um, 
I'm with uh, Mr. Commons, and we're just talking all the issues that affect you guys. If you're just joining in San Jose, I'm just touching this battery uh, thing here. Uh, we're at 20%, but let's keep moving along. So we, we covered minimum wage. We covered the whole Domino's uh, 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 Panera, I asked. Uh, um, oh, so here's the thing. I would recommend, and again, at a young age, I, I was the most liberal kid you can imagine. You name it. Uh, over time, as I start to uh, educate myself, find myself more in the uh, middle, but I think the key here, if there's there's anything, is uh, we should know that I'm saying it again for anybody who's there's two sides to every story, and then there's the truth. And I hope that everybody on any subject doesn't just jump in, they think objectively. And to go back and answer your question, I think it's also environment, right? We're a product of our environment, we're a product of what mom and dad are always saying, or the family uh, were around. And the only way to change that is simply education mm -hmm. like you said and, and i always say an example i said recently is uh martin luther king in the south how you how do you stop that hate and it sounds like a horrible idea but how about you end segregation and let them go to school together no there'll be riots there'll be madness this and that but the only way is to get them to kind of understand each other and uh, and, and see both uh, perspectives so i think uh, that's important you wrote a book I saw that on the drive. Totally changed gears into happiness. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Got Chris joining. What's up, Chris? Uh, and, and tell us more about that. Educate me on that. Well, you know, when I had my first child, uh, I just loved reading to him. You know, I, I read to him every Dr. Seuss book, every everything. He even read to my child when he was in the womb. And so he was always interested. And, and when he got to be about four, he was curious. We had some rain and he, he he loved going out for walks with me and my dad and so he was always curious when when he couldn't go outside and so I wrote a book about the rain because he hated the rain <laughs> and I said son you know you have to know that the rain is good for you it's right? good for the it's good for, you need water to drink and so I I wrote a book about the weather cycle and why rain and why water and rain was very important very very necessary yeah. And with the drought, we kind of learned that, and and we'll be we'll be feeling emo. Oh gosh, I wish it wasn't raining. But uh, to other people, to the plants, to the farmers, to uh, those type of people, right? I'm out in Gilroy, and they're happy, right? Because yeah. we're we're the salad bowl. Oh yeah, uh, and, and we need that more than ever. So that's that was pretty cool. That was just something to, and uh, that's a cool niche with children's books. How, how did how's that? Like going, you just put it out there. And I just put it out there. I'm, honestly, I didn't make any money off of it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but but and I did it for the for the love of uh, of teaching my child and 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 hoping to have an easier conversation with other children. Right. And uh, we did get we did sell about a thousand books. Wow. Uh, and I donated uh, several hundred right. uh, to to schools and whatnot. But uh, yeah, there's was, there's so much that goes into that with the marketing, PR tours like that. But when you just do something to do it. I mean, you never know, five, ten years from now, they'll be like, hey, you know, we sold this many books. All of a sudden, they're sparking and having momentum. Yeah. I mean, you could have uh, never, never imagined. There's some really cool paintings I wish I could show you guys yeah. here. But That's but, from the book, actually. Um, <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, those are, awesome. those are pages from the book. So you brought, you brought an artist in to kind of do those as yeah, well? Yeah, the, the artist from the illustrated, the book uh, illustrated those two paintings for me. And, uh, you know, really qu quite proud of it. That's very cool. That's yeah. awesome. Let's keep moving on here. If you're just joining us, um, we have, let's see, my, my wife's on just joined from Malaysia. That's pretty cool. Look at Facebook Live there. Uh, so let's move on through here. Um, yeah, I kind of made some topics of, you know, objectivity. We talked about that Lady Liberty, and I think that's very important. It's one of my famous, uh, one of the famous Lady Liberty is basically, for those of you who don't know, she is blindfolded, mm -hmm. right? She has two yes. scales. And um, she sees no color. She doesn't see celebrity. She doesn't see any of those things. And she doesn't see sides either. She doesn't see Republican, Democrat. She stands for what's right. And over time, I think it'll flip flop and go back and forth. And I think it's so important. Have you ever heard of Milo, the controversial Milo Yiannopoulos? He's a Greek gentleman. I've he's heard of him only because he's been on the news. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. See, and that's what's so interesting to me is, of course, I don't agree with all of his statements, but I was just very disappointed when I, I heard about all those UC Berkeley uh, riots and so forth. Cause that's the last place in the world that I thought they wouldn't be open-minded to anybody's views, no matter how crazy you are. I can't state how important that is because basically, you know, 
I don't like the KKK, but if they came to my town to talk about something and they're not harming anybody, uh, it will literally, I feel it's my job to let them say what they want to say. And when I was younger, I would think, why the heck are the police there protecting them? You know, we should beat them up. We should do this. But I feel that, uh, again, the First Amendment right is to protect unpopular speech, not popular speech during those times of... Uh, the British, that was pretty, you know, disappointing to me, but uh, those professors can't control that, right? It might have been other people, but that's simply what I, I wanted to uh, talk about and, and how that's so important. Even, But let, let's shift to San Jose for, for those who are interested. So what's going on with San Jose? we got some future plans. You were tweeting out that we did uh, add... San Jose Airport's doing awesome, right? Yeah, we're, we're growing in leaps and bounds. Uh, we got uh, Frontier Air that announced four new routes yesterday. Last week, we had uh, Aeromexico uh, nice. uh, doing a nonstop uh, flight to Guadalajara. Awesome. And uh, actually, the Frontier flights were only $29 <laughs> to each start. Wow. Yeah, I was uh, stunned. And uh, But the Frontier was domestic, Aeromexico is international. Yeah. How's our, our international uh, side doing? I think people would really care about that because some people don't even know. Yeah, no, we've had we've had a large increase in our international flights. We've have we have a British Airways, we have Lufthansa uh, flying nonstop flights to Frankfurt. Uh, British Airways going to Heathrow. We have uh, Hainan Airlines going to Beijing daily. We have uh, ANA, which is uh, All Nippon Airlines, for uh, going to uh, Tokyo. Uh, we have uh, Air China mm -hmm. going to uh, Be uh, not Beijing. Uh, they're going to Shanghai. And uh, we, of course, we have Volaris going to Mexico as well, and uh, Alaska going to Mexico. So we have a lot of international flights okay. that you could choose from, and, and nobody knows that San Jose exactly. Airport's a hidden jewel. You know, right. there's no delays, there's no weather delays. Everybody to San Francisco, <laughs> yeah. Oakland. Yeah, yeah. Every, and, and it's easy to get in and out of. You know, there's no, there's only two terminals really. So right, right, right. Uh, as far as expansion, they, they kind of they're working on stuff. They finished that second half. Is there any other expansion plan that you know of? Or? Yeah, there, there's there's one on the book that's already pre-designed. Okay, uh, but we need we need to inc even increase the air uh, traffic even more. Yeah. To get to get to the phase that to the third and final phase of expanding the airport. Got it. We also expanded the uh, western side of the airport to include a lot of the private uh, planes. Okay. And Google uh, is yes, the yes. one uh, who owns uh, you know basically a large portion of Signature Air. Okay. Uh, and so they they're right out there on the west uh, end of the uh, airport too. Wow. Wow. So and when you say increase air traffic, that means kind of build out so more planes can land yeah so no forth. no okay. well no new new carriers new routes okay we, we still have a lot of uh capabilities of landing right and, and taking off right. a lot more capability right. uh, but we just don't have the number of airlines uh, necessary to build out that third phase right yet we need significant increases awesome awesome so let's talk about downtown san jose one thing i want to say is i'm pretty impressed that how much better it's gotten. I don't think you guys get enough credit. When I was 17, I'm 29, old man now. Uh, we're either going, come on, everybody who's listening, we're either going to Santana Row or going to San Francisco because, you know, the nightclubs and so forth, they're basically changing names every year. Like, let's be honest here, you remember the days uh, of then, and I, I just stopped going there. And I went back for high school reunion. I see all these breweries. I see all these things um, coming back up, I think that's uh, amazing. My dad told me about a time where you guys had a huge homeless problem there, and they kind of really cleaned uh, that up. Um, are there any any updates you can think of of improvements or trying to? Because I know there's just always hundreds of things going on in your guys' meetings. There was talks of um, I, I know Vice Mayor talked about a separate parcel of land that that Google bought, but going back to just downtown San Jose, there were talks here and there about kind of trying to increase the startup atmosphere and, and so forth that Google's thinking about putting an office in? Is it so so we, are, we are in negotiations with Google right now. Okay. Uh, and they are considering buying uh, at least 12 parcels, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, and that will, uh, that is going to be uh, west of the Highway 87. Okay. Uh, and uh, they've already purchased at least 12 to 16 parcels. Correct, yeah. Parcels. And their goal uh, is to build up 
near the train station SAP mm -hmm. area. Now, it, it's amazing because the entire downtown has about 10 million square feet of, of business. They're talking about adding 8 million square feet of business. Awesome. Which uh, it helps all of us here. I mean, basically doubling the size of downtown. Right. Uh, and to put that even in perspective, if any and if anybody has gone out to the Apple campus, it's like 2.6 million mm -hmm. square feet mm -hmm. uh, for Apple, that, mm -hmm. that uh, spaceship. Wow. This will be triple, 8 million. Yeah, yeah. Almost triple what, what Apple has built. Right. Uh, so we're excited about it, but this is only the first phase of this. Right. We're still in negotiation for the land. Once we negotiate the land, then they need to negotiate uh, what goes on each site, you know, uh, is it going to be, is it going to be all business? Is it going to be business plus, uh, you know, living facilities? Right. Is it going to be commercial? Is it going to be residential? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be, you know, so there's a lot more discussions to be had. So you guys and this gentleman like this who negotiate on your behalf and guess what? They're not purchasing this land for their personal stuff. These are all things for you guys who at the same time are uh, struggling because, you know, the affordability in San Jose is tough. So they want to move out uh, to Tracy or move out to wherever. But the reality is they're going to end up trickling back. If they can land a job at Google and we continue to add these opportunities, it's only going to be great for them because their pay scale is going to be in San Jose. They can still stay near their families, you know? Yeah, we, we hope to get people off the highway because right now people are traveling for an hour on Highway 85 just to yeah. get to Google or, or, or uh, Apple. Uh, Apple is thinking about locating here as well. They've already purchased 88 uh, acres mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. And so we hope that people have a, a lot lower commute by having more companies locate here because right. uh, it's just would be easier. Uh, secondly, I think building more building more housing, which we are doing. And if you've seen downtown, we're building a lot more new high rises and those are all housing. Um, we, we've we approved several low income housing projects, homeless projects, including well, the Plaza Hotel. Well, and whatnot. Yeah, let, let's, let's get into that. I, I keep hearing that thrown around last time uh, I hung out with uh, Osh and, and a few others that uh, there's this affordable housing development income. How does that work exactly? And, and where do you guys limit, you know, what's affordable? What's not for? I did hear about in '87 that they're adding some homeless shelters and so forth. Um, if you could repeat one more time, where was that kind of plan for? Is it so? There, there's there's a lot of things that the city is doing in regards to homelessness. Uh, there are several projects right here in downtown, uh, on Second Street, um, on First Street. Uh, we have one in St. James Park. Mm -hmm. All in the design and building phase right now. One of one of them is being built. Uh, and, and these will provide hundreds of new uh, units for, uh, for homeless people. We have other projects that we're thinking about to create lower income housing. And we're discussing those all around the city as well. Right. And so, unfortunately, it takes a long time from the, uh, planning, uh, the, from the approval stage to the planning phase to right. the building phase until the open the door phase. Yeah. So, Right now, the money is coming in from several different uh, sources, including the new tax that has been levied uh, called Measure A, mm -hmm. which is a property tax. Mm -hmm. uh, those That money will start coming in. Uh, of course, our housing department has its own money coming in from investments from other buildings that, that they've... Uh, and where does the majority of these property ta well, th these taxes come from that, again, people lose sight of? It's big businesses, but most importantly, small mom and pop businesses who contribute the majority of this, so that's why you hear people say support your local mom and pop business. But when it comes back to minimum wage, people are like, oh, well, we don't care. Let's increase it. We got to increase it. Let's put them out of business. But this is just another way uh, that everyone, uh, you know, is affected because obviously they have higher ma margins. Do you disagree with me? Feel free to stop me if, if I'm wrong. Well, I you know, I, I got to tell you. Everyone pays taxes. Everybody pays taxes. And I think the bigger you are, the more taxes that you do pay. So federal, state, city yeah. level. Yeah. Property, you know, there's property, there's sales, there's gas, there's. Uh, and, but what do we get in San Jose? We obviously get just stri strictly city. And we actually get we we get a little piece of a lot of different things. So okay. we get we get property tax, we get sales tax, we get some gasoline tax, uh, we get uh, we get uh, business tax, which mm -hmm. we just doubled on businesses, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we have increased business taxes. Uh, so we 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 tax developers for developing property. It's kind of like mm -hmm. uh, you want developers to come, but yet here we are, we're taxing them. 
uh, to the tune of 70 plus dollars per square foot. And you want them here to do all those things, but at the same time, in their mind, they're thinking, why the heck should I come here? I could go to Reno, Nevada, and I could build my Tesla plants there. And on top of that, they're going to incentivize in California. Oh, well, come here anyways. You know, uh, so we got to find a, a middle in that way and think about it. Yeah, well, the, the more expensive that we make it for them through taxes and other things, uh, taxes and higher wages and forcing them to do uh, project labor agreements at this point, this is something that we're going to be discussing mm. soon. If we force them to do project labor agreements, it's going to drive up costs, um, peace labor agreements. Uh, it's going to drive up costs and it's going to make building more expensive, mm. Mm. building anything more expensive, including low-income housing. So mm. uh, basically, uh, we're making it, harder and more costly to build so it's harder to break even when they sell something right so it will discourage people from building and so that's what i've been i you know if we drive down the cost maybe builders will come and provide us with a lot more housing when you have a lot more supply the price of housing will actually uh, start to diminish and uh, and that's what i hope will happen yeah so that's a it's a great way to, to think to think about it and i think it's important to again hear everybody out and it might open your mind to a universe you never imagined because uh we're product of our environment right you're the average of the five people you spend the most Mm -hmm. time with so i think it's important that i don't want my five to ever even be average i want to to constantly be talking to people like yourself and uh and that doesn't mean i have to take everything joe schmo says literally take what you can take from that what you agree with what you disagree with and make it your own opinion, right? Where you can you can build it um, on. But let's see, I know there's some other cool stuff. Let's see that uh, I randomly brought up. How are we doing here as far as uh, 40 minutes just went by. Can you believe that? Wow. When we talk about these type of things, that's the last thing you have to worry about. Usually I try to cap at 30 minutes, but whenever we have great conversations, it ends up like being an hour, right? And the whole social media thing is, yeah, be, do 30 seconds, do one minute, but I disagree. It, it's the context. If it's interesting things that people actually enjoy listening to, uh, you'll be surprised when, that people are actually listening all the, all the way through on an hour, you know? Um, ooh, this is a good one. And I guess this is enough to do with the city of San Jose, but I think it's important to um, talk about uh, and kind of open people's eyes to about um, there are certain things about uh, Bernie, Mr. Thomas, that I love, uh, but you can't have one or the uh, other and people debate and they get emotional and they get angry uh, on these type of things. Uh, I simply want to talk about uh, this idea and concept. And ever since he did that, I started to see more and more things on Facebook today talking about why capitalism is broken and why there's blah, blah, blah. Yet people still want to come here instead of other places. He was giving examples of, of Denmark. Um, and how wonderful it is there. I'm, I'm sure it is amazingly wonderful, uh, but if we were about 10 to 20 times the size of uh, Denmark, things are a little different, right? Uh, completely. Um, and again, uh, any of these opinions or views, it's Roman's fault, <laughs> right? But I think it's, it's very important to talk about these things. And what I put was, okay, capitalism is not perfect. Um, and I'm sure socialism is not perfect. Uh, what 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 is your two cents on that? Again, any subject. I try to. Any great debater is able to debate the side that he doesn't even personally believe in. I was taught that San Francisco State, one of my favorite classes. And but what it forced me to do is also be empathetic to the other side. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, yes, capitalism is going to have its flaws, but that's the American dream for immigrants. That's what gives them. As long as they know they have a shot. And not that, hey, you were born of X family in X thing, China. So you're, no matter how hard you work, you're never going to climb up. Um, there is no one-size-fits-all solution, in my opinion. I just wanted to get, you're much wiser, much older than me, your thoughts of, you know, these ideas of, of socialism that... Well, you know, you could, you could see how socialism has worked. Mm-hmm. You could look at countries that try it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize Denmark as a socialist country. Mm-hmm. They have some socialists socialistic ideas uh, in, in the way that they care for their population of, of, of homelessness and health care. And I think we could learn a lot from them. However, if you try to buy a sandwich in Denmark, it'll cost you 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. So you need to, you know, and the, the stores are often empty. 
I've been to Denmark, and I can tell you that for the fact. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, every action has an equal and opposite. Yeah. Reaction, so yeah. if it costs you, uh, you know, fifteen dollars to buy a beer, you know, mm -hmm. that you're not getting the tourism you, to go a little you, down. You, yeah. You you may not get as much uh, sales as you would hope. Um, on the other hand, I think capitalism could could uh, could run astray as well. But I do believe in the fact that uh, while capitalism uh, isn't a perfect, uh, just like democracy isn't perfect, mm -hmm. it's the best system uh, that has worked. It's uh, you know it, it, it's a system that works better than all the others. Mm -hmm. and, and and I've 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 gone to China, like I said, I've gone to Denmark, I've gone to to Mexico, I've gone to many uh, parts of the world. Right. I've lived in the Middle East. I could tell you that dictatorships don't work either. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could tell you that uh, illiberal bureaucracies, people who don't listen to one another, um, even if they are democracies, mm -hmm. uh, they don't work uh, mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the, the beauty of living in the United States is that you're, you are entitled to your opinion. Nobody's going to put you in jail for it. Always. You're entitled to work as hard as you want and, as, 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 and you can be as lazy as you want. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, your reward will be commensurate to how hard you work and ho or how educated you are. And I think uh, people do lose sight of that. Um, to be in a country where what you put in is exactly what you get out yeah. is only only fair, right? Yeah. And if you look at the immigrants that are coming, mm -hmm. if you look at immigrants that are coming right now from India, from China, from Mexico, they're all entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They all came here to work hard. And a lot of times, you know, my kids included, they get a little lazy, you know, <laughs> mom and pop are taking care of them. So you have a lot of people that actually live here that don't appreciate the system I think as much as my parents uh, did. Uh, show me, show me a great man who's the son of a great man, right? That's usually what happens and kind of the pressure I put on myself is it's like, you know, this I never fill a great man's shoes and my dad went from nothing, worked his tail off and that's reason you know i'm totally grateful but i have to also push myself to remember where i came from remember what we've been through but what i ask myself is how are we going to get this to our, our kids uh do we do we torture them there's a weird attribute to struggle versus success and adversity i'm sure there's many other great ways to go about it but that's just so uh interesting to me you see the the correlation where uh well why are why are all the indians gas station owners why are they they, uh, all this there, there's there's no uh secret to it they just didn't want a better life they've been through hell uh you look at san francisco they were treated uh some of the chinese were treated uh, the worst on building the railroads at this time now they're all the property owners right in that way so i think there is a uh kind of a correlation to that right in yeah, that way the, the american dream is being your own boss yes yeah, uh, yeah. and i think uh, and and determining your future Right, and I think there's it's still that way. I think it's a little harder to get to because uh, right now I think you not only have to work hard, but you have to be educated, yep. especially in this area. Yep. Uh, and humans, we want to look at capitalism, social, and we want to we want to complain. We want to focus on the negative, and more times it's always more negative, than positive instead of focusing on what are the positive things about capitalism. And I don't, you know, blame people. I think it's really comes back to. Uh, we're used to being chased by the saber-toothed tiger. We're naturally in no, I, and I'm serious about that. I thought this was brilliant that we're constantly What's wrong? What's going on this that we're constantly in this, you know, genetically we're in the survival mode if we got to keep Moving so we tend to always have a negative bias on everything I think that's essentially where this question came from and people are on social media it's so interesting to me when I post something ridiculously positive No one cares but as soon as you post something that's controversial or negative or probably not a good thing, you get all these dopamine likes and repressions and people are talking, engaging. And what that does and why I fear for our youth is they're like, well, I need to keep doing that. I need to keep doing that. I need to post pictures with less clothes on all the, the wrong things because that's our social environment. Yeah. That's our social uh, world. But I guess they'll get older like, like I did. I was a crazy kid. Too and uh, with time and with education, like yeah, you, you've always said, um, this was this was brilliant. Out of all the talks I did, I mean, these are real issues that again people don't like to talk about because it's you know quote unquote politically correct. So uh, I'm honored and grateful that you know you can have these discussions and 
that's what, in my opinion, being a patriot is, is all about, being able to talk about those things. L- last two, um, when I explored, um, I, I stopped, sorry, Mom, I stopped selling cannabis years ago, years ago. Uh, and that, that was a, a personal choice, but I also started watching documentaries like Taboo and so forth. And we can do both uh, in one. How important do you feel? Um, and I will always be pro uh, uh, cannabis, but I agree that it is worse. You think back to the prohibition days, it's worse to make something illegal that it would actually uh, hurt things more versus when you regulate it the way we are now. Uh, and it actually produces crime, kind of will help tax incentives because what happens when we make it illegal? We completely put it back to the black market, right? And we basically, Pablo Escobar, those type of things. If you want to, uh, you know, kill, what was the pro- prohibitions guy's big name? Not, not a, but anyways, if you want to, the quickest way to make him not rich is by to, make it legal and regulated and that puts them in turn out of business i'm thinking about the big alcohol mogul in the 1920s the most feared guy i can't remember but um do you agree with that that's yeah i'm saying capone Capone. 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 yeah so so yeah you know you're you know i'm a libertarian at heart to be quite frank with you and i I hate titles (laughs) be you and i I, I would classify myself the exact same way yeah independent libertarian that's a great way to put it so I, i i believe in giving the people to make their choices, including the bad ones. I've heard Ron Paul say that. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you, uh, you know, uh, honestly, even if you want to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, I don't right. think that there isn't. You, you know, shouldn't go to jail if you don't yeah. miss if, out on that. You, should you get shouldn't have to build a, you know, $16 billion net right. to, to, to stop people. that one person right. you know, from killing themselves. They might kill themselves in other ways. 100%. Uh, and so, when it comes to drug use, I think you're right. We need to address the problem through, um, through education uh, and through um, and what, commercial. What's, what's crazy is when people find out something is legal, uh, the use goes down dramatically because it's not. So like for the kids, it's not sexy anymore. Yeah, it's not yeah. sexy anymore. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's like mom saying, whatever you do, do not go to the top of that hill, right? What are you going to do? You're, you're going to want to go check out the top of that uh, hill. So that's many ways. And obviously, these are open-ended topics that have many different views, many different debates. I think that it's important for all views to, again, you know, objectively talk about these things. And forget about the product. I think from what I just said, whether it's cannabis or it's uh, prostitution, I also think there's a method to, you know, maybe Amsterdam does it for, for tourism, but I try to see both sides and think, that okay, these women are back to the black market. There's uh, you know, uh, uh, sex slaves. There's no uh, there people being kidnapped. There's a whole market to that. And uh, I know these are controversial, crazy topics. So I apologize. I think that they're important to talk about. Where if it's regulated, like let's see, Germany, Amsterdam, you name it, all these European companies, that maybe there could put in regulations where um, you know. They're, they're, you take it away from the black market, women are being abused. If they choose to do this in sound minds and um, they can be healthy and make sure they're getting you know, tested before in the interview process, et cetera. And I know for some people, again, they don't want to talk about these issues because especially in the Asian households, I'll tell you right now, my dad's probably going to back at me when I get home right now. But, uh, but these are uh, important to talk about because there's a method to their madness. And like you said about Denmark, we can explore those things. So um, I know the underlying goal was to talk about uh, San Jose, and we, we had those, but I wanted to pick your brain about more of these important topics and, and why I was you know, so impressed with you because um, it's okay to think differently. It's okay to be curious um, and think outside the box as long as you feel you have enough uh, logic. So I encourage people to don't always be afraid to speak up because you have to go with the norm of what everybody's um, talking about. Right? Yeah, well, I, I I often get criticized. You know, recently we had a uh, I I was on the losing end of a conversation where we ban coupons for cigarettes. Okay. You know, and I and I thought you know all my co- council colleagues wanted to show how against smoking they were mm-hmm. by banning coupons for cigarettes. And, right. And so you know. You can ban the coupons for cigarettes. You can even ban cigarettes, but you're not really 
uh, you know, so you're solving their problems, you know, yeah. uh, and then the only thing that can stop people from smoking is, you know, the, the social, it, it is no, no longer socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. If you make, if you make cigarettes socially unacceptable, mm -hmm. then you've changed the, the, the conversation. Right now, marijuana is socially becoming more and more socially acceptable. In the 70s and 60s, doctors were examining you while smoking a cigarette in the room. Exactly. You know? And so and so now it is more socially acceptable for you to be uh, smoking a bong yes. than it is for you to be smoking a cigarette. So, so times change, yeah. uh, but, the, but the, the fact that we shouldn't in my belief is we shouldn't ban things, right? You know, for social mores. That's the quickest way to make it go through the roof and the pricing to increase. Um, and, and same thing goes, if cigarettes were illegal tomorrow, the price would go up and people would be on street corners. The market would open for black market to start slanging cigarettes and people would start fighting and killing over cigarettes. People would start going to jail over cigarettes. Right. And I think that throwing well, that that's a whole other topic, too, and, and throwing people uh, into jail over those these things. I can't remember if it was Sweden or Switzerland, but their case study of they decreed that really bad heroin problem. And mm -hmm. they did the same thing. They changed and said, well, we're throwing these junkies in jail and they come out and then they're going to get thrown right back in. We're not solving the problem. So then they started, you know, creating these centers when the person they see a judge a doctor and a psychologist and then they get actually get treatment plans on how to get off they give incentives for turning in the needles and what happened in turn is they decreased from like an it was hitting a close to 90 percent rate everybody was addicted and, and then it in turn brought things down dramatically so uh, i believe it was a, a a woman that was in charge of all of this uh, she may have been the whatever you want to call them the, the president of the country in a way and was very commended and felt that it should be studied because there's kind of a, an issue that our solution, you know, during some of those Nixon and Reagan times and, and so forth, any other time um, that we just throw those people in jail and talk to the cops. They're coming right back out. And when they come right back out, what's going to happen? They can't get a job. They got a record now, right? They can't do this. So they're going to do whatever they can to sell it. it. It's a cycle in that way. It doesn't matter if you're Indian, black, Mexican, it affects all it affects all of us and everybody goes through that so i think again like, like you said being open to having these discussions and not just tabooed and uh especially in our asian Middle eastern culture all these conversations we want to just wipe under the rug pretend they're not an issue until something really bad happens and then we wish we would have talked about these things with our kids and um openly so um i think those, those things are important to uh, talk about do you, you disagree with you know, no, absolutely. I talk with my kids about drug use all the time. I do think that we need to, to uh, I, I, I definitely have uh, some misgivings about do, making these hard, hard drugs that, at least the ones that, that mess with your mm -hmm. mind. And Extremely addictive, permanent. yeah. Uh, those, those are ones I, I, I would have some apprehensions of making illegal. However, we need to do a better job educating our kids. Uh, you, you know, we have tons of tons of commercials on television telling people not to smoke mm -hmm. but we don't have a whole lot of tell people yeah. uh, preaching about not getting into harder drugs cocaine or what the crack or whatever whatever happens what right. what the with the drug of choices right. we need to have commercials about you know again edu those. education education is the key to change perception what are the effects and not effects and uh, then, then let them be intelligent enough to decide and make the decision when they are educated of the consequences like eh, nah I'm okay with not doing that, but if they don't know, uh, they're gonna... I, I used to be part of a group uh, that um, call, called Ahmed and Cares, where we, we, we actually showed up to ca school campuses with wrecked right. cars uh, from people that were driving under the influence or driving distracted. Interesting. You know, and so, so we showed the, the kids the consequences. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, we actually put people in a makeshift car even, you yeah. know, like a and then we 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 uh, we let them text while they're yeah. driving. That I was right when you said that I was going to jump to that. And what people aren't realize in 2017, I'm sure we're going to see more of this. That not only are, are the passengers distracted, the drivers distracted, and hopefully, uh, phone just died. Facebook, but that's okay. I'm going to be able to upload. We're still recording here. Um, that 
uh, hopefully the people will be able to to see that I'm not sure how we're gonna adapt to this hopefully all these self-driving cars will be done by that so we'll all be writing essays while we're in the front seat uh, yes that's but, what we'll be doing <laughs> yeah that's, that's the reality I think less than 20 years um, but that's gonna start to become an issue so what do we do we can ticket 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 or we can do our best to uh, to educate people yeah. on it only takes a millisecond and you know how guilty would you feel if you know uh, you, yeah. you lost all your family members due to something like that? I yeah, think doing we, that, we we even you know in my in my first year we even created a uh, campaign for kids to make their own videos mm -hmm. and we did a, a challenge for whoever whoever had the best video mm -hmm. uploaded to YouTube and whoever got the most hits. Interesting. And uh, DG DG uh, sponsored it. And we incentive. need ten thousand dollars worth of prizes. Incentive to the kids. So and I'm sure they produce awesomely creative stuff. Great videos. Right. It was called SJ Between the Riot Lines, and I think you can still log on to that website and, and see the uh, videos. You guys can check that out, guys. Kids I think uh, I, I think that's all great stuff, and I think it's important that we can continue to study people and how they react to things in their psychology. As we give people tickets for speeding, we want it to improve in that. If you put up one of those radar meters that just flash in yellow, um, even if it doesn't even mean whether you're speeding or not, people immediately naturally react to that and slow down. And it's been proven versus giving them a ticket, making them angry, them looking around and speeding up more. So I think that's uh, another key that um, you know I think plenty of research will continue to go to and hopefully does. And we're all we're all open to that madness. So. Um, I think that's very cool. The reason we choose yellow, the reason we choose red for brake lights and stop lights and McDonald's because you know it, it grabs us, right? But um, man, I can't thank you enough. I'm not. I'm not sure how any of my talks are on top of this talk because, and you being so open to it. And I think gentlemen like yourself are always weary, weary of their image or what will people think. But in my opinion, you know, Mr. Thomas now and being real and talking about those things behind the door that nobody wants to talk about and not being politically correct in my opinion you know will make things skyrocket um as far as uh, and that's important we're just being transparent and being ourselves so mr Carlos, thank you my pleasure also my very pleasure. much great having i'm you. sure we'll, we'll we'll hang out again but um uh, mr johnny Thomas, ladies and gentlemen um anywhere we can check you out uh, your website sure yeah it's johnny uh, johnny Camus on facebook yes. and it's uh, uh d10 so d10.com yep sjd10.com wonderful yeah google johnny Thomas. Yeah. everything will come up yep uh but thank you again sir all, all right. right pleasure take care we're signing out